In the previous video, we successfully prepared our project for the development of our multiplayer game. And now we can finally start programming a session system. In this tutorial, I will cover hosting sessions and leave the session browser implementation for the next part. Let's start by creating a custom game instance. This is a type of blueprint which gets created when the game launches and can be accessed from anywhere within the game. So go to Project Settings, Maps and Modes and at the bottom you will find the setting for the current game instance. Click the plus icon to add a new game instance blueprint. This will also set the new one as the current one. Inside we will make an event for hosting sessions. When this host session event gets called, it will then call create advanced session and fill in parameters with values from the event. Here we have player controller, which can be obtained straight from the get player controller function. Then to add parameters to our event, we can just drag connections from the create advanced session node to the event's body. We will also include session name, map name and game mode which can be stored in this advanced session in extra settings. You can have five different types of properties that you can save in this array. We will use literal session property string for all the three additional texts. Each property needs a key name and in this case we can use our events variables names. Afterwards, we can show messages to see whether the creation was successful or not. If everything goes as planned, we can then open a selected level using Open Level node. Use the map name value as level name. This node has two additional settings in its hidden menu. For options, type Listen, which will make the level start listening for connections. Next, we will need a starting level for our multiplayer menus. This is just a blank level because it will be used for displaying widgets only. We will need a new custom game mode called GM Multiplayer Menu and a player controller called PC Multiplayer Menu. I will explain why we need the controller soon. Now we can make our multiplayer menu widget. Inside we will start by placing a vertical box in the center serving as a holder for all items. On the top we will have two buttons for switching between host and find sessions tabs. For this we will also need a widget switcher which is exactly what we need to be able to make pages of widgets. To switch between those pages we will use active widget index number. I will show you what I mean. I will add two vertical boxes inside the widget switcher with one containing a button. If I change active widget index now, we can see it switching between those two vertical boxes. To change that index by pressing buttons, we can call setActiveWidgetIndex function in the graph editor on onClicked button events. Index 0 is therefore for host session tab and index 1 for find sessions. Host session menu should contain input fields for all information we can give to our advanced session. We will start with session name, where the name can be typed in the text box next to the title. I like to add 10 pixel paddings between elements in the horizontal box. Next is map name, where we will use a combo box for choosing an available map. It's a good idea to add a default choice to be the first element in case we forget and leave it empty. Also, map names must match the real ones. If you want to use different names, then either rename your level assets or with a bit more work it can be done in blueprints as well. For max players we will use a spin box. It's important to enable the newest option called Always Uses Delta Snap and set Delta to 1. This way, when we drag the slider, it will always change the value by a whole number. We can also remove the unnecessary fractional digits. We want to play a multiplayer game with at least two players, so set minimum slider value and minimum value to 2. I also decided to limit max players to 16. 
Finally, we will need an ESLAN option with a checkbox to choose whether this session is hosted on a local network or online. The checkbox is quite small at first and the only way to resize it is to change image resolutions for each checkbox state, which unfortunately takes some time. A little bit more padding on all horizontal boxes and the host session menu is almost finished. The last and the most important element we are still missing is a big host session button. We should call the host session event from our game instance with information filled in the menu. First, make sure all input fields in the menu are variables and have meaningful names. To extract values from each component we use for spin boxes get value, for checkboxes is checked, for text boxes get text, and for combo boxes get selected option. We will display the widget in the new PC multiplayer menu player controller, but first make sure that the GM multiplayer menu game mode is set for this level and that it uses the right controller in its default settings. One way to display a widget blueprint is by calling create widget and add to viewport nodes in a game mode, but you will realize the problem of this setup soon. The menu appeared on the server side only. That's because game modes run on servers and aren't visible to clients in a session. Instead, we use player controllers since each player gets its own one. We will need a new custom event for displaying our menu with replication options set to run an owning client and reliable enabled. That is because player controllers are initialized on the server and so the event with run an owning client option gets called on the client. Otherwise, we will run into an error where the server is trying to assign client's player controller to its own widgets, but only local player controllers are allowed to do that. And the rest you know how it goes. Create widget, we select our widget blueprint, add to viewport and then set input mode to UI only with player controller set to self because we're running this in a player controller blueprint already. Then we mustn't forget to check show mouse cursor for this player controller, call the event we just made on begin play and we're ready to try it out. What I believe happened here is a bug that sometimes comes up when testing multiplayer sessions in the editor with two windows. In reality, we won't start a game instance as client but as server only, so it's totally fine. To prevent this from happening, we can always create a session on the client's window and later join as the server. One last bit we must do before we finish this video is allow player movement once we are teleported from the multiplayer menu to the playable level. First, I will move the default third person game mode to the blueprint folder and rename it to GM Play and make a new player controller for it. Then set it in the game mode's defaults and on begin play in PC play, call set input mode game only, which will switch focus from widgets to the game, and lastly set focus to game viewport to capture mouse movement immediately. Let's try it out. As you can see, it works as expected. We're halfway through this multiplayer setup, and in the next video, we'll make a server browser to allow others to join the created sessions. As always, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. See you in the next video.